clean sweep. Point Park teams dominated this weekend in RSC play. The highlights are next. Rematch of the Stanley Cup. Which team won this time and who got a warm welcome to Pittsburgh? And Damon Lawn from the rugby team joins us in studio to talk about the upcoming season. You won't want to miss this. It's time to come on down to the Pioneer sideline. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to the Pioneer Sideline. I'm Sarah Maculin. And I'm Mike Turk. After winning seven out of their previous eight matches and coming away with two big conference wins at home this past weekend, the women's volleyball team has moved to first place in the River States Conference East Division. Making her sideline debut, we are now joined by Nicole Pampina, who had the call on Friday's match against West Virginia Tech. Now, Nicole, this team has struggled all season long, closing out matches. We saw it against Asbury a few weeks ago. How were they finally able to exercise those demons this past weekend? Well, the thing is, with the WV Tech game, that was their only blip where they kind of, you know, fell back a little bit. I mean, up until that third game, they had the lead and they never lost it. Um, the fourth game, they were able to battle back by six points. Um, they never got flustered. If anything, there was a little bit of animosity on WV Tech's side. Um, they were just really able to battle through that. They really didn't slip up. They were looking strong offensively and defensively, and um, I think it just really worked out for them at the end of the game. Now, Point Park has been down their number one hitter in Ashley Taylor for quite some time now. How have they managed to keep picking up these wins in her absence, and who has been stepping up to the plate with her being gone? I would say at the end of the day, it takes a village to win a volleyball game. Um, you need all your players all the way around to be strong. Um, in terms of who could step up for her, Erica Gums, she had a total of 28 kills over the weekend. Um, Ryan Akishi was up there as well with 15. Um, and they're both within 30 kills of her this year, um, her uh, career kills this year. Um, D uh, D'Angelo, she leads the, leads the team defensively and she's in, her stats are in the top 10 of um, RSC's defensive back row. Uh, I think it will take all of them working together in unison to, uh, to win, to keep up. Now IU East dropped both matches this weekend. Point Park wins both. Point Park slides up in the first place. The winner of the River States Conference East Division gets to host the tournament this year. Mm -hmm. How can Point Park make sure they do not fall from that top spot? Well, first they can't get too comfortable, uh, especially since there are still some weak spots, there are still some holes, but overall I think they finally found a chemistry. Uh, Dishman and Rosier, they're a wall up at the net uh, defensively. If they just uh, keep doing what they're doing and fix the little errors, the service errors, letting the ball hit those holes that are on the court, I think they'll be fine in keeping that top spot. All right, thank you so much, Nicole. Coming up next, how the Point Park soccer team has fared in conference play. And a rematch of the Stanley Cup. Which team won this time? Those results and analysis are next. <laughs> What would you do to create something that could survive a thousand years? You'd start with a formula, head to the lab, and forge it with fire. Just imagine everything it could do. It could leak pollutants into the soil and water, or it could conserve energy, cut CO2 emissions, and reduce raw material. Recycling is more than cutting waste. Recycling is about the legacy you want to leave. Why on earth would you want to do anything else? Recycle. Don't throw away our chance at survival. Good evening and welcome to Newsnight. I'm Josh Troop alongside Jess Patterchak. Tonight we begin with... The mayor is continuing to deal with the challenges the city is facing. But tomorrow we have just a little bit of cloudiness. We have... ...off throughout the day with some strong wind gusts. That's going to continue tomorrow. 20 teams have already started talking to free agents. Saturday's partly cloudy, but 70 degrees? Where is the pool at? I mean, come on. Uh, you might have already burned your bracket, ripped it up. I am Royce Jones. And I am Casey Hulian. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. That's your news tonight, Virginia. UVU Television is live here at the Center for Media Innovation with a very exclusive interview with Point Park's Black Diamond, our school mascot. We're taking questions on our social media at UVU Television. 
first question came in from at Point Park U Black Diamond. They want to know what is one thing you love about Point Park? You view. view. Ah, I, I knew it. You view is the best. It is. All right, Alex, you want to read our next question? Okay, we have another question from Point Park Cab. They're asking, when is the next time you're going to make a surprise appearance at their next event? Ah, uh, he's being coy. Looks like we're going to have to show up. Yeah, to I, guess we'll, I guess we'll have out. to see. All right, that's all we have for right now. But you can submit your own questions at UView Television, and we might read one of yours after the break. Welcome back. The Point Park soccer teams had a home stretch this weekend against Midway University and Brescia University. But let's start with the women. The women faced Midway University Friday afternoon, winning by one goal. And Brescia University Sunday and dominated 7 to nothing. Delaney Baumas now joins us in studio to talk about the women's home stands. Delaney, how did the team look first midway as opposed to Brescia? Well, their offense wasn't the greatest. They did outshoot them 21 to 2, but the game was only 1 0. But that changed when they went to Brescia and it was 7 0, and there was no shots against them. So I think the defense played very well in both games, and the offense just kind of lit it up a little bit more against Brescia. So it re they really. They really went out there against, but Brescia is one and twelve, and Midway is five and three. So you got to take that into consideration as well. They did step it up against Brescia, I think. Now, what does this defense mean to this team since it's being led by a sophomore and Chloe Bowser? I think it means a lot. Like that's really good that she can step up as a sophomore and take this position over and lead the defense, and that's really going to help them in the coming years because she is only a sophomore, so she's going to do better in the next two years. She's going to do better as a junior, and she's going to really do well as a senior and lead this defense, and that's really going to help them in the upcoming years. And I think that that's great that she can take the take this lead role as a sophomore. So now, what do you expect from this team coming into this weekend as they head to Indiana University East? Well, Indiana University East, all of their coaches are first years. 90% um, of their roster is freshmen, so I think they really need to take advantage of this young roster, and they really need to take advantage of the inexperience that they have, and they need to stay on with their offense, and their defense really needs to stay on as well. And so if they can just do what they've been doing, I think that they're going to do well. Um, Indiana University is an average-looking team, so I think they can do it. Thanks, Delaney. Now, the women's team will travel to Richmond, Indiana this weekend for an RSC conference game. Now we move on to the women men's team who also played Midway and Brescia University. The men took on Midway Friday winning 4-0 and faced Brescia on Sunday winning 3-0. Two games, two shutouts, and a three-game win streak. Megan Massiosi now joins us in studio to talk about the men's RSC games. Now, Megan, I know it's early, but how is this men's team looking to possibly make, make it into the playoffs this year? They're looking pretty good right now. Honestly, their record is overall 8 and 3. Conference-wise, they're 3 and 1. And away, they're 3 and 1, which good. is good because last year they were 3 and 5. So, road was a struggle last year. But also that game that they did lose away, they only lost 2 to 1. And they didn't have Josh Williams because he had gotten a red card the last game. So, really, as long as they keep their emotions under control, I think they'll get into the playoffs confidently this year. Now, you mentioned Josh Williams' red card, and we've mentioned before on previous episodes the yellow cards and the emotion that this team carries. How do they learn to control those emotions, and can they do that? And if they can't, what does it mean for the team? Well, it's been interesting because they've only had one game so far this year where they didn't have a yellow or red card administered. They need to let it go. The refs are going to even up the calls like you see in football. You know, they give this one a penalty, so then, you know, if it was iffy, they'll go back and give it to another team. If not, their teammates really need to start going up to them, calming them down. Same with coaching. He needs to make them more disciplined. Like, if you keep getting these yellow cards, that hurts the team. So they need to have more of a team mentality to keep their emotions under control. Now, lastly, what do you expect from this team this weekend as they travel to IU East? So they are actually a new, like newer in the division. They're 0-2-1 in the conference right now, so they haven't won a single conference game. But the two games they lost were close, so that is going for them. But their main sco goal scorer is Trevor Lincoln, and he has 10 goals in the season. But the next closest person only has one goal. So I think the Point Park offense is more high-powered, and they'll go past their defense for it. But it really depends on which goalie they start. One goalie averages four to five goals a game that he allows. 
the other one averages one to two. So I'm hoping if they play the wrong goalie for Point Park, the offense will take over, keep their motions under control. I see them winning big this week. Thanks, Megan. Let's switch from the soccer field to the football field. The Pittsburgh Steelers look to stay on top of the AFC North against the Jaguars. And the Pittsburgh Penguins had a rematch against the Nashville Predators. For more on that, let's go to regional reporter Kira Fry. This weekend was a roller coaster ride of emotions for Pittsburgh fans. On Sunday, the Steelers hosted and lost to the Jacksonville Jaguars 30-9, with all of the Steelers' points coming from, Qu from Chris Boswell. The Jaguars' defense came to play, intercepting five of Ben Roethlisberger's passes, two of which were pick sixes back-to-back -back in the third quarter. According to ESPN, this game made Ben Roethlisberger the first Steelers quarterback since Mark Malone in 1987 to throw five interceptions in a single game. The Steelers, now 3-2, and two, will be on the road next Sunday to take on the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. From the turf to the ice, the Pens shut out the Nashville Predators on Saturday, who they faced in the Stanley Cup Finals last year. Malkin and Gunsel both scored in the first period, giving the Pens an early lead. In the second period, Ryan Reeves added to the score with a redirect from Ali Mata. The Pens would go on to win the game 4-0, but the Pens did not escape the game without an injury. Early in the first period, defenseman Ian Cole left the game after taking a shot to the face, leaving the Pens with only five defensemen for the rest of the game. The Penguins will travel to Washington to take on the Washington Capitals. Baseball season has come to an end for the Pirates, but they've made headlines for their humanitarian efforts. This past week, the Pirates collected 460,000 pounds of supplies and $225,000 to help people in Puerto Rico who were devastated by Hurricane Maria. Pirates chairman Bob Nutting, President Frank Coonley, and Pirates players Francisco Cervelli and Sean Rodriguez traveled to Puerto Rico to deliver the supplies last Thursday. According to the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, some of the supplies have been delivered to the hometowns of third base coach Joey Cora and special assistant Mike Gonzalez. The Pirates also had plans to make a delivery to Vera Clemente, who was the widow of late outfielder Roberto Clemente. Kira, now back to the NFL. Who do you see winning the AFC North this year? This year, I could see the Steelers winning the AFC North as long as, they can, as long as Ben Roethlisberger is able to make a comeback from this last game because right now the Steelers and the Ravens are tied at 3-2 and two at the top of the AFC North. Thanks, Kira. Coming up, rugby captain Damon Long joins us in the studio to talk about the team. And later, our reporters will debate who will win the Stanley Cup this year. We'll be right back. I shouldn't have to pay to walk down the street. Pay with my comfort, my freedom, my peace. Always on guard, on edge, off limits. Don't follow me. Don't touch me. Don't treat me like I'm yours. I don't need your whistles, your comments, your eyes. I already know I'm a prize. My confidence isn't for sale. Respect me. Don't inspect me. And when people ask us, who can join UView? The answer really is anybody, and we mean anybody. Any major, any experience level. Some people, you know, have a lot of experience coming out of high school, and others don't know how to really sit on a couch properly, and, and that's okay. You know, we're here just to give you the chance to learn and have fun and prepare yourself for the real world. College, after all, it's all about trying new things.
talk about the Point Park rugby team is Damon Long. Thanks for being here, Damon. Now, when I first started here as a freshman a couple years ago, the rugby team was just coming about, really. How has this team evolved since you've been here? Uh, it's, a, it's evolved in a lot of ways. Um, you know, when I was a freshman, I was basically the last, my, my class was the last class I got to p play with guys that founded the club. Um, and, you know, the guys who founded it, of course, are the most passionate about the entire club. But uh, that carries on through us, that, like, we've seen this sort of passion and, you know, we want to take that and carry that forward, show that to the young guys, show, like, how this is a brotherhood. And, you know, I'm sure the guys who started didn't know, like, if it would continue past them since, you know, the founders are the most passionate. But um, it's evolved in the fact that we've brought it into our own. We've, you know, taken reins of it. And we want it to be, you know, not only uh, a great team, but also um, a great brotherhood um, with brothers who are bonded together. Um, and also a campus club which tries to um, do good for the campus and do good for the community. Now, did you play rugby before you attended Point Park? No, I didn't. I, uh, I played basketball, soccer, and track in high school. I actually had a soccer scholarship here, but I uh, turned it down for other, other financial reasons. Um, and then I realized, you know, I didn't, I wasn't ready to give up sports. Um, you know, I came out of high school like, like that was my thing, it was like just sports. Um, and then I came to school and I just realized I still needed team sports. So then I ended up playing rugby because it's the only club sport here. And you know, freshman year was not very good, but picked it up and you know, eventually somewhere in my sophomore year started to actually pick it up and understand how to play. <laughs> now you're a fly half on the team. Correct. That's your position. Now Rugby isn't that much known of a sport. Like people know what a center is in football or Correct. a point guard is in basketball. What does that mean your on-field responsibilities are at Sh that position? Sure. Um, uh, a good way to describe the fly half is like describe myself as the quarterback of the rugby team. You know, I'm a lot, I'm in charge of a lot of the play calling for the backs, and the backs are generally like the faster guys with better footwork uh, who tend to play outside. I'll call a lot of. Um, plays of how we decide to run so I might call a one-two switch which means me and my inside center do a switch I might call a two-three loop which uh, is another play between the two centers um, so I'm doing a lot of play calling a lot of the decision making so sometimes the fly half kicks a lot so I tend to you know maybe kick in a certain situation and read that so I, I make a lot of reads from the fly half position and make those decisions from there so fly half is a lot of decision making. That's why it gets compared to quarterback. Now rugby is a very physical sport. Yes. So with all this back and forth battling, how do you stay manage to stay healthy and avoid injuries? <laughs> oh, I would break like a twig and man. This sport right there. I'm not built for that. Um, I mean, it's definitely a hard thing to avoid. I've taken more injuries in my three years of rugby than I have in my like 15 years of other sports. Um, I, I mean, I broke my thumb two, a year and a half ago, and I had never gotten it fixed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't know I broke it um, until I, like two months later, and I went and had x-rays. I was like, you should get this fixed. And I was like, can you get me set up with a doctor in Pittsburgh? And they're like, okay. And then they just didn't. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in terms of like preventing injury, it's just a lot of you know, staying in the gym, uh, eating right. You know, uh, if, if guys lift like they're bodybuilders, they're more prone to injury because you know, if you're an athlete, you have to lift uh, and train for that sport. If you want to play rugby and you train like you're a cross-country runner, you're going to be small, you're going to be skinny, you're going to get hurt. But if you train like a rugby player, um, get the parts of your body that need to be tuned up uh, in, the, in the right position, then um, you're going to be less susceptible to injury, but it um, doesn't really guarantee anyone from injury because... You know, you hit head to head with someone, you still can't, can't get extra muscles in here to protect you from a concussion. So it's possible to get injured. Now you brought up, you mentioned the word brotherhood. So yes. how important, it, important is it to have that type of brotherhood with this type of sport in rugby compared to other sports? Compared to other sports? Um, I think compared to other sports, you know, you just have a lot more guys on the field. And, you know, in the game of basketball, one guy can take over and control the game really um, and that go that reigns true in a lot of sports and I think rugby you know 
one guy has a good game, it doesn't matter if everybody else, if everyone else isn't playing to the same pace uh, in the same way, isn't reading things the same. So, you know, we have to be close. We have to understand each other. We have to, um, you know, kind of do life together and understand one another in order to play well on the field. And, you know, we want to carry that to being outside of the field. We don't want to just be like guys that uh, hang out three times a week for practices and games. We want to, you know, go hang out um, at each other's houses, go to uh, events together, you know, do and I know okay. Mike has one final question he wants to ask you. Sure. Yes, I am very curious. Now, you guys do a lot of on-campus activities. Like, you did Pie Rugger Correct. not too long ago. Oh, that yes. was pretty successful. Now you have Rent a Rugger coming that is up. That's right. That's right. How much do you think you're going for the <laughs> option? Uh, last year, I went for $75. Um, so. I go for an apple. <laughs> uh, last year, I went for 75 The top person went for 240 um, wow. I feel like maybe my like senior status gives me an extra like fifteen dollars to my price zone, so I, I'm gonna call myself at ninety. You know, it's a safe bet. Be a little optimistic. Well, thanks, Damon. We wish you and the rest of the rugby team good luck this season. Thank you. Yes, and coming up next, our reporters will debate who they think will go to the Stanley Cup this year. We'll be right back. Cool. <laughs> Mirror, mirror on the wall. Does not matter if I'm short or tall. If I have skinny legs or my hips are wide. It only matters who I am inside. Blue eyes, brown eyes, black or green. What makes me most beautiful cannot be seen. When you look at me, don't judge me by my parts. The, the most, most beautiful, beautiful thing, thing about me is my heart. heart. Welcome to Newsnight. I'm Josh Krupp alongside Jess Patterchak. Take a look at the five-day forecast. Yes. Uh, you might have already burned your bracket, ripped it up, or put it through a paper shredder by now. British Prime Minister Theresa May officially triggered Article 50 on Tuesday. The World Baseball Classic has concluded with Team USA winning its first title in four WBC tournaments. And that is your news tonight. With Royce Jones, I'm Danis Marrero. Have a great night. Welcome back. Well, it's everybody's favorite part of the show, the case of the week. Our panel of reporters this week are Megan Masiosi, Taylor Spirito, and Jared Davis. All right, now we're talking playoff hockey already this early into the season. Now, you guys have some predictions picked out already. So we're going to start with the Western Conference. Megan, you're up first. I have the uh, Chicago Blackhawks as my Western Conference because they just reacquired um, Patrick Sharp and Brandon Saad. And that game against the Pens, I mean, I think you can see the offensive power. Uh, for me, I have the Edmonton Oilers because, need I say more other than Connor McDavid, um, they're getting their elite goaltender back in shape, and it's going to be a good year for them. Jared? I, too, actually have also Edmonton McDavid. He is the fastest skater in the league, and he proved it on opening night, skating 25 miles per hour to score a breakaway goal. And they're just getting consistently better, and they're a very young team, so it's going to get better throughout the season. Now, you both had Edmonton already. Megan, why are they wrong? 
Are they wrong? Did you yes. not watch the game against the Pens with the Blackhawks? I mean, Niemi Swiss cheese, so. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I get that, yeah. but come on. Well, Brandon Saad, while he did have a hat trick, he has yet to score over 60 points a year. They traded Panarin, who for his first two years had over 70. If he can produce those numbers, I can see the Blackhawks going that far, but throughout his whole career, he has yet to produce those numbers. But isn't hockey about more than having just one player? Yeah, it's about having well, a good defense, which the Blackhawks do with Duncan Keith, and their goalies aren't bad either with Crawford. Well, Edmonton's defense is really picking up, and yeah. it really showed, especially last season, um, taking Anaheim all the way to very last wire. Game seven, but they lost. I mean, they lost to the Ducks. Come on. They have all this firepower, but they lost in game seven to the Ducks. They're that too young last year. still. They're still too young. They rely too much on Carter McDavid. They say that, but also, I also like to think this as the 0-9 cup run for the Penguins. They are building just like the old Penguins did. Sidney Crosby, McDavid is stepping into like that type of role where he's going to be the best hockey player in one to two more years. Well, Le over Sidney Crosby in one to two years? Yeah, definitely. Really? If, you're, if you already had a sophomore season with 100 points and already beat out Crosby, it's just going to be consistently better. He's making everyone around him better. Patrick Maroon never scored over 15 goals in his career. 27 goals last year. Leon Dreisaitl, 77 points Okay, last but what year. about their goalie situation? Cam okay. Talbot is actually a very good goalie. Now, <laughs> I like the debate that's sparking yes. here, but let's kind of take it over since we let in with Sidney Crosby to the Eastern Conference. What are your predictions? Jared, we'll start with you. For the Eastern Conference, I can see Pittsburgh coming back, but only if they can get a third-line center and if they can get another puck-moving defenseman. I have the Tampa Bay Lightning. They just got their captain back in Steven Stamkos. Um, thank you. You're welcome. Um, and they also have rookies stepping up uh, with Stamkos being gone last year who are now in their sophomore season, only getting better, so I could see them going very far They also well. have a former Penguin on their team now. They do, Chris Kunitz. I am in between the Pens and Tampa Bay Lightning. I'm hesitant to pick the Pens because, I mean, it's hard enough to – go back to back, but now to go for three yeah. in a row. I mean, it's difficult. I mean, look at our goalie situation. The Emmy's not terrible, but I mean, yeah. did, did you watch the game the other night? Yeah. That was a little bad. But with Tampa Bay, they are a little bit older. They do have Chris Kunitz. I can see him being that veteran player that he was for the Penguins. I don't know how Stamkos is going to do coming back from, he had a clot, like he had that blood clot a couple years ago, and then he just blew out. I believe it was his knee he blew out. I mean, that's a hard injury to come back from, especially in hockey. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. So, it's, who is your pick? Are you still I, in between I'm, all yeah, the fence? We, we, have, we have one for the fence I'm in and, yeah. and one, one for, for the lightning. you got to be the deciding factor because right now we have the Oilers versus who knows. Oilers versus Tampa and Pittsburgh. So but pick one, Megan. How many I'm Blackhawks to play somebody? Right. I know. Who are the Blackhawks playing? They're going to play the Pens. Oh, okay. I'm going to go with the Pens. Hopefully not win 10-1. So, to we one. have the Stanley Cup matchup of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Excuse me, the Pittsburgh Penguins, thanks to Megan, versus the Oilers. Oilers, but I guess the real question is, who's going to win? I didn't pick the Oilers. I had the Blackhawks, so <laughs> if it was that way, I'd have gone with the Blackhawks. I do not see Connor McDavid beating Sidney Crosby if that's what it comes down to. I just don't see it. See, I'm the exact opposite because I feel like Connor McDavid is definitely stepping up into that role, like you said, and uh, Leon Draisaitl and Connor McDavid are taking on that role yeah. of Evgeny Malkin. Yeah. Uh, Sidney Crosby, and they're just going to absolutely dominate with that offensive power. So we have Megan going with? I'm going to go with Pittsburgh if it's against the Oilers. And you're going with the Oilers. The Oilers, yeah. What about you, Jared? I'm still going with the Oilers because the Penguins also have had injury problems. Look, two years ago, Flurry got injured. Matt Murray stepped in. Last year, Murray got injured. Flurry stepped in. There's no Flurry this year. And Niemi, last year, he was 61st in the league in save percentage and 63rd in goals against average. If he has to come in, there's no way the Penguins, definitely in the finals, would beat the Edmonton Oilers. So we've officially given the Oilers the kiss of death. Yes, yes, the sideline curse. Good. All right, Sarah, <laughs> real quick, who are you picking this week? Oh, hmm. I'm going to – Megan was strong with her points, but I'm going to have to go – with Jared, because I like that last stat you threw out there. It's, it's unanimous. Strong. I am also going to go with Jared on that one. So, congratulations, Jared. I think that's your first win this yep, week. First. Or well, this that's year. all we have time for this week for the Case of the Week. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to come back next week at the same Pioneer time. The same Pioneer channel. And the same Pioneer sideline.